all things Pelicans, you're now tuned into the Pelican Post Game Report. Much love to the fam. Appreciate y'all being in this episode of PPR. We're in the building. Shout out to the fam. Uh, much love. Appreciate you guys. Sorry I'm coming at you a little late today, man. I had some internet issues right now. There was an outage in my area and we just working it through. So big ups to you guys. Thank you for being here. Please feel free to hit upon the like button, hit the subscribe button. And by all means, feel free to share the show on your social media feed. PPR representing the flock and nation stand up. Shout out to you guys. We up in this thing. So yes. Uh, and of course, we're going to cover and talk about all the things, the, the latest news notes of the Pelicans. We're going to uh, go over the roster. We're going to talk about the five spot. We're going to open up the phone lines. We're going to do all that. And like, like it today, we're not going to have a long drawn out show today uh, because I do have another stream I got to do for the Saints content on the sports coma. So that'll be coming up at one o'clock. So, you know, we'll probably shut the show down about uh, right before that, 1230, 1245, something like that. But uh, big ups to the fam today. Much love to you guys. As we up in this thing, man, PPR represent. Big ups to everybody, man. What's up, brother Moles? Good to see you in the chat, sir. Michael, shout out to you. Uh, Saints Pals Nation, much love. Elite, big ups. Much love to everybody. Good to see you, Pals Nola. Shout out to you as well. Please feel free to hit the like button, family, upon entering the stream. If you're not a subscriber, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And by all means, feel free to check out the poll in the chat, uh, asking your thoughts on the Pelicans five spot. How do you feel about the Pels five spot and answer that as well? And only two options there. You feel great. Yeah, bad. It's not good. Uh, y'all let me know how y'all feel about them as well. All right. How you doing? Daniel, shout out to you, man. Appreciate you for being here, man. Much love. Appreciate you guys giving your valuable time to PPR uh, this morning. I wanted to play a little bit of this about BI shout out to our channel members there is a uh, a couple of uh uh videos lock content videos that are available for you guys you can check it out on the community tab for our members uh as well we do at least one members only video per week for the channel man it's all gravy all right so anyway let's get into this man we got uh uh lex and dc will chime in later let's cover this i want to play this for you guys right here shout out to Pelicans film room, always finding these good clips. A lot of these clips, you can't find them somewhere, but shout out to Pel. I've been, I've been giving Pelicans film room shout out for the last several weeks or so because he, he or she, whoever that is, is doing a really good job of putting out some, always finding the good stuff that's related to the Pelicans and putting it out there. So shout out to them putting in that work. But this is what they were able to gather here. And this is coming from Zach Lowe, who's somewhat of an insider. Uh, talking about the BI situation. So let's 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 give it a listen. Here we go. Between the numbers and the impact on I'm same as you. I I can't find any kind of buzz on a realistic Ingram trade right now. And I think it's gonna be difficult for the Pelicans. So Ingram is a very good player. I've always had kind of a soft spot for him, but I've off, I've often said that you look at his numbers and they're just these like superstar numbers, like 25, 5 and 5. And you watch the Pelicans play, and it's just like he doesn't feel like that good of a player. Something is yeah. lost in translation between the numbers and the impact on winning. Part of it is that he's like a B minus B plus passer, not a great passer, but a good passer. Part of it is that he just has never been as good a defender as he should be given his physical tools. I know he's skinny, but he's he's very, very long, obviously. And part of it is that he just doesn't take threes, just does not take enough right. threes. The Pelicans were on him for years to take more threes, more threes, more threes, shoot quickly off the catch. He just does not want to do that. Um, I, I do think so. So you do face this question of like, am I going to pay $50 million a year, a max salary for a guy who's the second or third best player on a great team? That's a tough choice. I do think he's getting a little bit of a raw deal based on his life in the torture chamber in the first round of the playoffs last that, year. Yeah, Coming, the last look we got was a tough, tough look, but you also got to give Lou Dort a lot of credit. Got to give Lou Dort a lot of credit. You got to acknowledge that Ingram was coming right off an injury, like fresh off an injury and a lot of time off, and like that's not easy to do. And you also should acknowledge that in his previous foray into the playoffs against the Suns in 2022, he had a really good series and looked like, oh, my God, this guy's kind of a playoff killer making these mid-range jumpers. I just go through the teams. I'm like, well, Atlanta just made a trade with the Pelicans and didn't get Brandon Ingram. Yeah. Charlotte 
has Brandon Miller and kind of has taken the long view. Sacramento just pulled themselves out of it. The Bulls, I don't really see it. Uh, the Warriors as like a market and alternative team USA, Steve Kerr, that went horribly with Brandon Ingram for all the reasons I just said about his game. He's just not a great fit with the Warriors system. And all the other teams are like, why are we adding five extra wins to our ledger when all we're trying to do is be bad like Brooklyn? OK, well, like all these which makes me which which actually made this guy's thought about Utah five percent more plausible to me. I just if I were the Jazz, I just I I just don't I wouldn't do it. But that's just that's just me. I I wouldn't do it either because I think it's like it's time for Utah to fall out of the kind of purgatory state of of being stuck in the in the middle and then trying to sink closer to the bottom towards the end of the season. Um you know, and the, and the, obviously the other risk for a franchise like Utah is you, you make a trade for this guy and he's a free agent. There's no guarantee that he stays. Now the flip side of that is well, if his trade value is limited because nobody wants to pay him, then is you know, um, you you do that's the kind of wink wink research you get done before making a trade. I'm sure it's the kind of research that was done when they were looking into Mikael Bridges too. And Mikael Bridges is now yeah. plays for the New York Knicks with his entire college team. Well, um, and it's the kind of thing that you could say about an Indiana as well. And they did their research with uh, Pascal Siakam, and obviously that worked out well. So. All right, that's a bit of it right there about Brandon Ingram. A lot of people are puzzled by the B.I. situation. A lot of stuff going on there, uh, as we see. But it is a lot of questions about it. It's a lot of questions about the Pelicans lineup in so far as how is it going to look like if it's a question at the five spot. And the Pelicans continue to try to address it as cheaply as they possibly can. As we kind of move to this article right here by who that daily.com shout out to rail right on the scoop he did this one and pelicans bring back trey jamerson uh jimerson excuse me they bring in trey jimerson uh they actually claimed him off of waivers and uh rail writes about it here i have bolstered the roster by claiming center trey jimmis jimerson off waivers awarding him a two-way contract now they jimerson is 611 Weighs about 260 and showcase some potential last season with Washington and Memphis. He averaged almost seven points a game, just over almost five and a half rebounds uh, in 23 minutes per game in 25 games. Standout performances came when he was with the Birmingham squadron. He averaged over nine points a game, 11.6 rebounds, almost two blocks per contest. He runs the floor pretty decently, uh, has a good set of defensive skills as well. And he would mix in with the rest of the Pelicans of unproven big. So we got a whole, well, Daniel Tice is the veteran of the bunch, but is far from a full-time starter uh, at this stage of his career. If ever, I don't think anybody's seen Tice at any point as a starting center unless injuries impacted your lineup and you had to go with him. But at this juncture of his career, we don't see him as a full-time starter but the Pelicans are basically going to do, and this is the mindset that they've had for some time is they're going <laughs> to, it's like, you remember last year and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that, they operated with point guard by committee. Well, guess what? The philosophy is switched to five by committee, <laughs> big by committee approach. How you loving that? But anyway, Daniel Tice, Yves Misi, the first round draft pick from this year, last year's second round pick, Carlo Mekovic, and now undrafted big Trey Jemison is thrown in the mix, too. So there you go. The Pelicans doing what they can do. Uh, this whole thing about not moving B.I. does have some ramifications, doesn't it, family? All right. And then, of course, some other news to account for that rail covers is E.J. Lydell was traded to the Suns in exchange for David Roddy. According to Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN, E.J. Lydell is on the move for a second time this summer as the Atlanta Hawks dealt him to Phoenix in exchange for David Roddy. Now, Liddell, six foot seven, only appeared in eight games with the Pels, averaged three minutes per contest while he scored four total points and grabbed five rebounds. He wasn't ready last year and the Pelicans like, yeah, well, let's just clump all these guys in with the deal. And they moved him. 
However, in 26 games in the G League, he averaged uh, over set, almost 18 points a game, eight rebounds, and Liddell's departure, it marks the significant. And he was thrown in on that uh, as a tossing or throwing piece along with the rest of the players from Larry Nance, Dyson Daniels, Cody Zeller, in the move to bring our floor general of today, DeJounte Murray, to the team, which I still believe was like one of the best trades uh, that I've seen in a very long time, especially probably the best trade. It could be y'all. That could be a good poll question, which was the greatest trade that the Pelicans, the Hornets, New Orleans Hornets ever had. You know, this one's up there. I might. Marcus Cousins from Sacramento. There you go. That's the right. This, this one could be up there. Maybe, maybe second. This could be the greatest one. Then you got to, uh, I would say after that, we drew a holiday. Then I put DeJounte. Well, it's, you got a base of DC too on what you had to give up to get them. Because. Wait, what you, we gave up to get Drew Holiday? Nerlens Noel? Like, come on. I, I don't remember exactly what we, we gave up. gave up Nerlens Noel. I'm telling you what we gave up. <laughs> the thin top. Remember they tried to pair those guys, the thin top. Yeah, you might have a point on that. So DeJounte might very well be the, what, the third one? Third. Third straight. What we give up for cousins? I, I forget. What was the cousins trade? Uh, Buddy Hill. Uh, probably a few picks. Might have been. Might have just been one pick. In Buddy Hill. We didn't give up a lot to get cousins. That's what made it so awesome. Mm-hmm. But we didn't really have nothing to give. <laughs> that damn team was so thin. Who would they? What would they cook get from us? Right. Yeah, they, they were was trying, just to- trying to get rid of uh, cousins mm-hmm. and. For some reason, man, that owner, he had a thing for Buddy Hill for some reason. QI, I, he thought Buddy Hill was going to be the next Steph Curry or some shit. I, I, don't, I don't get it, but, you know, that's how we got DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, DC, guess what? Buddy Hill is with Steph Curry this year. So how about that? that that's it. He's playing on the Golden State Warriors squad this year. So there you go. But, uh,. <laughs> Anyway, man, that's yeah, that's a good one right there. DC, uh, DC keeps it one thousand. So you know, this is the third best trade. It's, it's pretty good, man. Uh, David Griffin did do a wonderful job putting that pistol on him. So that that was that was an excellent one. All right. So anyway, Trey Jemerson, Jemerson is added to the Pels, and uh, let's just keep it a, a buck fifty. So DC, let's get some uh, some uh, thought process on Jemerson. The Pels five by. The, the, the five by committee approach appears to be alive in the building in uh, the city of New Orleans. The, the, the five by four, you <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> but look, I, I like it, man. Um, could you have that thought of anybody better we could have got and put in this two way spot? What you got? Uh, Jalen Crutcher? We probably could have given him the spot for it. Uh, He's Trey gone. He went overseas. He went overseas, oh, man. Ford? Yes. Ford went overseas? He went yeah, overseas. I, I, I know that was going to happen. I know he was going to go somewhere. He ain't going to wait around. We got him from Sacramento, so he, he wanted to be on the active roster. But um, I think, bearing the circumstances, man, you know, this is probably the best we could do. And Trey Jemison, I think in a limited role, a fair well for us if we had to play, play him, man. I mean, uh, I think I saw some stuff on Twitter. People was posting stuff up. I didn't go look at the stats, but was saying he played 14 or 12 games. Um, And in those games, I think he averaged like 10 points, 8 rebounds. You know? So, I mean, how could that be bad? The dude shot Maybe like sixty percent from the field, ninety percent from the free throw line. You know, ten points, eight rebounds. Like, how you gonna hit on that? You probably had a block or two in there. Real big body. You're talking about a, a, a dude that's big. You know, he isn't really uh, what you consider small. He's mobile enough. I ain't gonna say he's the fastest center, but he can get up and down the floor. He ain't one of those big old slow uh, lethargic centers. And I Thank think he's a, he's, a, he's a good body, man, if you don't get – I mean, got to rephrase that. He's a good center to have that can take some fouls. You know what I'm saying? If you can't um, 
if you can't get anybody else to fill the role and he steps up, you wouldn't be mad at that either. But if somebody gets injured, I think Trey does a lot more harm than good. And we really have three guys that are improving. You know what you're getting from Tice, right? So now you add him into the rotation. He could legitimately challenge for a starting spot. Let's say we get in training camp and Eve to me sees ain't really doing nothing. Carlo ain't panning out, but Trey is just awesome. Why wouldn't they start him? Yeah. He's the only one in the rotation that started before. Other than Daniel Tice, Tice, you don't want him to be your starter. No, not full time, bro. I mean, he'll pick up some minutes, but yeah, you you having issues if Daniel Tice is your your full time starter through games, and I think the Pelicans realize that, bro. So they working with a certain amount of money and resources to try to do the best they can do with the or, five. Or what if they have a trade lined up? Maybe one of the pieces we got to move off of is uh, a Magnovich or a Tice. You have a guy in Trey Jemison right there that can be, you know, a backup. If we get, let's say, a legitimate center, but we got to get off one of those dudes to do it, to add salary for whatever. You're saying he's a, a, a potential throwing piece? Huh? A potential throwing piece with a, for a potential BI trade down the line is what you're saying? For uh, a BI trade, or maybe maybe they pull a trade for a center that doesn't involve BI. Maybe we we move off a guy like John Hawkins or something. Even though I wouldn't, I wouldn't be ecstatic about that. I wouldn't want that. But I don't know what the Pels are thinking. But I know we need to start a starting center. So you know, what if we move off somebody and they're looking at the potential of having to throw in one of these guys in the trade for a legitimate center? Maybe uh, what Carlo McAvish did in the summer league perked up a lot of ears, and we could get Wendell Carter Jr. or something like that. Or maybe this is what it takes to get the Jared Allen trade over the hill. I, I don't know, man, because looking at Cleveland, though, all I did think about that, if we were to get Jared Allen, Cleveland all seemed like they have a backup center. Or they got Dean Wade, I think, it's like a power forward. But those people, they don't need another center, so you probably would – have to send him at least a backup to get a guy like Jared Allen. Maybe this is forward thinking by the Pels to throw one of these guys in there. Maybe they throw Trey Jimison in there. Could be. Uh, that's not a bad thought, to be honest. With you. That's actually a pretty decent thought. It could be a, a throw in. Uh, it's interesting, man, to be honest with you, man, to see what, yeah, because I, I don't know what the Pelicans are thinking either, DC. I don't, I, I, if I t- did tell you that, it would be a flat out untruth. I don't know what the Pelicans are thinking. And yeah. I don't think the Pelicans know what the Pelicans are thinking, Q. That's why I do about it. Yeah, I know. They're they figuring it out as they go. <laughs> yes. You remember, that's something I always say. They figure it out as they go, man. They, they, they This they, didn't they, work. Scratch it out. This didn't work. Scratch make, it out. They make one plan. They make one plan, bro. It's like, we want to get Jared out, right? If that don't work, it's everything. We're just, just figuring it out. It's figuring it out. Must plan A. Don't work. We don't have a plan B, C, D, bro. We, we just figure it out as we go. That's right. We don't, that's we don't how, think that far. Nah, that's 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 that, that's what it feels like. It really does, bro. All right, let's get into this next article right here, bro. Um, and shout out to the fam, man. Thank you all for being here. Hit the like button, family, as you're coming in. Uh, much love. We talking pals like we do every Saturday morning, baby. Good morning to everybody out there. Some of us are perhaps. Uh, already beyond noon. Good afternoon. If that's the case to some of the family members on the East Coast, uh, big ups to everybody, man. Thank you all for spending y'all valuable time here. Much love to everybody, man. We talking pales, man. Let's let's get it. All right. So anyway, this is the next article I wanted to share with you guys. Pelicans 2024 NBA free agency grades for every signing. Let's see if you guys agree on this one here. This is uh, straight up from the Clutch Point uh, from Clutch Sports here article here. Pelicans have relatively quiet free agency period with the main offseason move coming via trade. The Pelicans added the John T. Murray in the deal with the Hawks in the hopes of becoming a perennial contender in the Western Conference. But the Pelicans did have a couple of signings during the free agency period highlighted by the acquisition of Daniel Tice. While the Pelicans have lost their starting center 
in Jonas Valachunas and two key reserves in Larry Nance Jr. and Najee Marshall. The Murray acquisition still has them as one of the deeper teams in the West rotation wise. The starting center position is not yet decided upon, but the Murray trade ensures that both Herb Jones and Trey Murphy will likely come off the bench. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Both of those players are starting caliber on many other teams. Get, get, right, the- get right, Q. That ain't what you want, but that's what's going to happen. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised, DC. Like I said, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised by pretty much what, what's going on here. You're not benching CJ, man. We can we can give up the dream, bro. CJ got to bench himself. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't think he's gonna do that. But all right, let's let's well, get CJ this. CJ gonna be playing in the star lineup. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be like I said. I, I wouldn't be surprised, bro. Coming into the NBA free agency period, the team just needed to shore up some of their bench depth. The Pelicans did so with their signings. As always, health is going to be a major factor in determining the Pelicans' postseason chances. They were looking like a team that could possibly put a scare into a higher seat until Zion Williamson got hurt late in the fourth quarter against the Los Angeles Lakers in the plan. Now, Daniel Tice gives the Pelicans a quality backup center. Heading into the offseason, the backup center market was quite limited. The Pelicans often played Larry Nance at the backup center last season, but he's always been more of a forward. The only real backup center the Pelicans had on the roster the last season was Cody Zeller, who is limited as a player. The signing of Daniel Tice was a good move for the Pelicans. Tice was one of the best options available on the free agent market. His playing time with the Clippers dwindled toward the playoffs last season, but he's still capable of being, of being a solid contributor. Tice knows his strengths and doesn't veer from that. He may be a little undersized, but he's rugged. He's a rugged def- rebound that can actually hold his own defensively against some of the bigger players. He's a lob threat. He can space the floor with his three-point shooting. The Clippers needed him when Mason Plumley went down with an injury, and he excelled in a row. He shot 37.1% from distance over 59 games with the Clippers. They give that grade a A for Daniel Tyson. Yeah. And, and that's some of the things I had to kind of let the family members know is Daniel Tyson shoot that at 37%. So he can't hit the three. And he, he got a good Tice shot. Too. Daniel Tyson was a starting center, man. I mean, what, three, four seasons ago? Like he, yeah. he, he chopped liver, man. Uh, Daniel Tyson is way better than Cody Zeller. He's a yeah, definitely he is better than Cody Zeller. He's better and, than uh, Zeller. Yes. Yeah, way better. And, mm-hmm. If you had an actual center in front of him, it would be, you know, it's an amazing sign. It just looks weird when you're looking at Daniel Tyson. You're talking about him potentially being your starting center. But I'm trying to figure out how they're saying we had a quiet offseason. If we probably pulled off the biggest trade of the offseason, I wouldn't call I it know. quiet. It, well, no, it wasn't, bro. It was Underwhelming. The big- I mean, I could go with them saying something like that because you would expect us to do more with the way was- our roster looks. No, it was the biggest robbery is what it was. DC was the biggest robbery. I'd be the first to admit that the Pelicans put the pistols on the on, on the Hawks and and, and we, we robbed them people, man, big time, man. So, I mean, Landry Fields might not be there. But anyway, go ahead, DC. Finish your point, bro. Yeah. And uh, EJ Liddell going to Phoenix, man. Oh, man, that, that trade getting worse by the day. What, what if EJ Liddell <laughs> actually pans out? And they yeah. trade him to yes. Phoenix. Right, right, right. Because I actually think EJ Liddell can, can be good. I mean, I don't yeah. know if he will be. Yeah, but that's I think right. He can, he can be good. He has a, a really unique, I think, um, interesting skill set. Yes. But so they basically traded for two two firsts and Dyson Dames. So Dejounte Murray. Well, that Cody Zeller's in there too, DC. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Cody. I'm sorry. How can I yeah. forget about Cody? Right. How you feel about Cody, man? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, they need defense, Q. Maybe he yeah. get more minutes over there than he got with us. Right. But he could have played, though. That's the whole thing about the Cody Zeller thing. That was one Willie, man. Willie wasted away Cody Zeller because he could have gave him a lot. It's but, just but, really, he but didn't this, use this, He not going to play over there. I don't think Either. he I say maybe because you got a Conwu and then you got Clint Capella. Where, where, where's Cody's minutes? He ain't going to make it. They're they going to end up releasing him at some point. <laughs> so they traded for Dyson Daniels. Basically, that's all they're going to get this year. Right. And hopefully, you know, they could turn the draft into something. But right. judging right. off of uh, who they picked number one, I don't have a lot of faith in that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, I forgot the kid name, bro. Russell hey, Shore. I mean, that dude to make a a, a fool out of 
somebody. I just don't think he's that good, man. Not to go number one. Right. Yeah. It, it's crazy, man. It's it's. It, we'll see, man. Yeah. We we. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> He said we did them like Debo on from Friday, Damn. man. Your pockets, man. <laughs> you got on my forty. <laughs> you got say red. What you got on my forty? <laughs> we we Debo the Hawks. You know what? I love that DC. My grandma gave me that point guard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you that play, bro. Now you know I gotta pull that clip up now, bro. You know I gotta pull that guy. Down. Uh, That's crazy. Oh man, yeah, that was funny, man. Hold on, I gotta pull that clip up, man. Most you, right. you know, clip master, bro. You know I gotta. <laughs> uh, oh man, that's too funny, man. All right, anyway. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, man, that's 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 hilarious, man. Hold on, here it is, right here, fam. Hold on, y'all, give me a second, man. Y'all know Trey Murphy was in the back. Come on, Pelican, <laughs> stop him out. Stop him out. Him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yes, yes. You know, yes. you know the funny part about it? What makes it so hilarious, dog? People talk about what you got on my forty. Like forties are expensive, bro. A forty was like two dollars. <laughs> DC, you know, somebody though. get his man two dollars so you get off your back, bro. You know, DC, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this clip <laughs> and I'm gonna put the Pelicans and the Hawks stuff over it. I like that. Hold on, hold on. Let's do this. Y'all help me out. I'm, I'm gonna put this clip together today and release it later on. I want y'all because we already know what role. Um, uh, uh, it's Debo. Debo is obviously the Pelicans. All right, so Debo is <laughs> Debo is the Pelicans, right? Red is the the Hawks. All right, all right. So who is Craig? DC. Who could Craig be? Who we need? Who, is that the commissioner? Trey, Mur- Trey Murphy. Is, Trey is, Young. I'm about to say Trey Murphy. Trey Young. <laughs> Trey Young. <laughs> oh, you can have Trey. Oh, you can have it be Smokey. <laughs> No, 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 hold on. Who that, that we gotta figure it out, bro? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. So, who, 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 who is uh, who's Smokey? Let, let, let's do it. Who's Smokey? Is Smokey Trey Young? Who, who is Smokey? Who's Smokey? Smokey could be uh, J- Jalen Johnson. That's the the next best player. <laughs> <laughs> so you got Trey Young and Jalen Johnson up there. <laughs> yeah. y'all, y'all help me out, y'all. Come on, man. What y'all? Y'all seen Friday before? We got, we got. Oh, Debo. Oh, 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 you want to put Quavo? You want to put Quavo on Boosie up there? Okay. Sean <laughs> uh, says uh, Pales is no, no. Stop it, Sean. And Pales is not. Real. We won in this scenario, so no. He smoke, cut. smoke the NBA logo. <laughs> that was Laval <laughs> the so, NBA logo. <laughs> so, so smoke is the NBA logo. Okay, okay. Uh, Who's Mo Craig? Say Quinn Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so 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 Craig is Quinn Snyder. Is that what's going on? <laughs> Quinn Snyder, Quinn Snyder, and the NBA logo up there. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is literally what the Pelicans did to Hawks, man. It's crazy, DC. Knock your ass out, oh, man. That's messed up. Won't you give him back his chain? What chain? Yeah, what chain? <laughs> 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 DC, I got, I got, we gonna oh, waste no, man, you got to play the end, you got to play the end, bro, because that's what made it all worth it, dog. We got to oh, see the man. run to the cup. <laughs> 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 Why y'all you let help me? He, he was, he, they was the only ones help. You wasn't helping yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here, here you go, bro. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm gonna redo that whole scene, man, with the Pelicans, man. So hold on, DC. Let me get it right. So Craig, Craig who is Craig? Craig is Trey Young. They, they and, said, I, "I mean, we could go with the with the family." They said Quinn Snyder. 
Brooklyn Snyder in the NBA logo. <laughs> I think that makes more sense than Trey Young because Trey Young won't be traded too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, man! That, yeah, I, I'm gonna put that out later on, fam. I'm gonna work on that today, man. We're gonna we're gonna make that thing go viral, man. That's 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 the tr- that's that's what really happened with the Pelicans, man, and the Hawks on that the, on that Murray trade, man. Let me t- I mean that that was really <laughs> what happened. I right, anyway, let's get back to the article, man. All right, all right. Jamal Kane could earn a regular spot with the Pelicans. Uh, present presently, the Pelicans have four. Well, it's fifteen now with uh with uh, Trey Jimerson being claimed, but uh, it filled with two, three, uh, they had two of their three available two-way contract slots filled. The team signed Jamal Kane is one of their two-way players in DC. He's the guy that uh, is a question mark guy, you know, that a lot of people are going to be interested in finding out what he can do. Coming up on the third, Jamal Kane, the two-way player they signed. But they're saying here, it's yeah. coming up on his third season in the NBA. This will be Kane's final season of two-way contract eligibility. There's a good chance the Pelicans could end up having the final spot open and going into training camp, but Kane could ultimately earn the spot. Last season, both Ryan, Matt Ryan and Jeremiah Robinson Earl earned standout roster spots with the Pelicans after starting out on a two-way contract. So Kane has spent the last the past two years learning and developing in Miami's each system while playing on two-way contracts. He's likely spent most of the 24-25 season with the, the Beham Squadron, the Pelicans G League affiliate. Kane is a lengthy defender who can guard multiple positions. He can knock down an open three-point shot. He started developing an off-the-dribble game. He's argu- arguably more talented than either of the Pelicans' last two-way conversions in Ryan and, and Robinson Earl. And don't be surprised to see him get early playing time to begin the season and possibly earns the final roster spot. Kane is most certainly a low risk, high reward type of signing. All right. They give that an A as well. So two of those uh, players that the Pelicans add and Jamal Kane and Daniel Tice, the article likes a lot. All right. Furthermore, let's move on to this article right here. Uh, coming from the, let's see, uh, uh, who is this? Pelicans uh, Sports Illustrated. Oh, that's that's brother Kyle T. Mosley. Shout out to him. NBA writer believes that New Orleans Pelicans on the brink of contention. All right. We got some people that believe the Pelicans are right there on the cusp. An NBA writer has liked what the New Orleans Pelicans have done this season and believe they're on the brink of contention in the Western Conference. How about that? All right. Shout out to the writer. What's the brother name here? I just seen it here. Kenneth Teep. Hope I'm saying that correct. Correctly. Shout out to you. All right. The Pelicans have done a solid job of improving each season under Willie Green. After winning 36 games in 21-22, the team was able to play through the WNBA. Uh, excuse me, WNBA. NBA, <laughs> thinking about Angel and the rest of those girls. NBA playing tournament and earned the number eight seed in the Western Conference. In number in season number two under Willie, the Pelicans improved to 42 victories, but missed the playoffs. This past season, they won 49 games, earning a number seven seed in the first round matchup against OKC. Their stay in the postseason did not last long as Thunder the Thunder Thunder swept them, knowing that changes needed to be made. David Griffin got to work on upgrading the roster. The biggest move to this point has been. Uh, has been made was requiring DeJounte Murray from the Hawks. New Orleans has a ton of assets built up from previous trades and the time to cash in on some of them is now. Griffin's next order of business will be figuring out Brandon Ingram's situation. Entering the final season of his current contract, trade rumors have swirled around him for the last few weeks. Depending on what happens with Ingram will greatly impact the team's outlook for the 24-25 season. But in my opinion, Zach Harper of The Athletic, the Pelicans are right on the cusp of contention. Harper recently put together power rankings following the 2024 NBA draft and the start of free agency. New Orleans is on the move coming in at number seven in his previous rankings. The Pelicans were number nine that puts them near the top of the second tier in the NBA on the brink of contention. They are the top team from the Western conference and his, his section behind only the Knicks at number six. And this is what he wrote. I think they did. The Pelicans still need an answer at center with the departure of Valachunas. I love the addition of Murray. 
he didn't fix the Hawks defensive issues, but he will absolutely bolster an elite defense in the NBA. New Orleans ranked sixth last season. I like the Tice addition, but I'm not sure New Orleans can utilize him as his full-time center. We have to see what happens when B.I. due to the team's perimeter log jam. Now, New Orleans uh, depth chart at center from last season is gone. As Harper noted, Valachun has departed in free agency signing a deal with Washington. Larry Nance was traded to the Hawks in the Murray deal. Addressing the need in the middle could <clears throat> come in an Ingram swap. The market for him is difficult to navigate given the new CBA and the NBA, but ideally, New Orleans would bring back an established big man to give first round pick Yves Misi some time to develop. All right. So Zach Harper says he believes the Pelicans are uh, a, a move or so away from contention. So that's pretty fun to think about. A lot of people obviously don't feel that way, but it's good to hear it. All right. All right. A move away from contention. Huh? <laughs> that's right. That's it. That's it, D.C. And by the way, DC, DC, DC Bob, let me tell you this. Uh, DC keeps it 100 is live right now. 1,000. One, there you go, 1,000. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but look, I'm one of the people, man, I, I think even if we don't pull off a trade, we're still contenders. Do I think they'll be able to win the championship with our current roster? No. But I, I think the Pelicans could definitely make some noise. It ain't like they guaranteed a first round exit with this roster. Um, it's all about how they run the rotations and you know, with the way Willie Green normally runs the rotations. I can see the lack of optimism from everybody. But um, one more move if they do get a center. Hey, I think that's uh. Like we're definitely major contenders if we're able to get a big name center. But it's everything's really up in the air. Um gotta sign BI before uh August sixth if we want to trade him. So we got roughly what about two weeks. Well we're gonna continue to keep having this same saga. Right? So uh man, it's it's pretty much Wait and see. Still till this point. So, till August 6th, not really going to know anything, man. You're not going to know anything. But Brandon Ingram is probably, I think, one of the better players. Or you, you could say the best player out there that's still available to get other than uh, – but some people say uh, Markin is definitely better, which I don't think he's a better player than Brandon Ingram. I definitely think he's a better fit. He fits teams better, so – if you can't get Markin and you need a win, what other player is there other than B.I.? So if they can get the contract thing figured out, man, and get him signed for a reasonable amount of money, I think that makes it even better for him to be able to be traded. You get him, like, uh, you know, I've been saying two years, 75, two years, 80 million, something like that. Um, I think he's then tradable for a lot of teams. Yeah, and that's 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 something that's very murky right now, DC, that August 6th deadline, man, because I know a lot of people are thinking about Brandon Ingram, but also La Laurie Markkinen is also uh, bantered about in terms of that date. And as it appears, I mean, Utah Jazz are leaning to kind of giving him his money right now in some of these reports. So... Like you said, we do have a little bit before that happens, but boy, that would clear up a lot, wouldn't it? That'll clear up a lot of stuff really fast about it and make the path a lot clearer what's going on with the whole BI situation. I, I'll tell you for certain, man. All right, DC, you all right, brother? I think DC moving around forklifts or something. I don't know what's going on, man. He's. All right. So anyway, shout out to the fan. Appreciate y'all for being in the stream, man. Uh, listen, this is a uh, very interesting, man. Like we talked about, the, the the Pelicans do have bigs, a multitude of different bigs, a veteran big. He's not a starter, though. A part time starter, perhaps. Uh, Yves Misi, first round draft pick, talented, but perhaps not ready.
Carlo Mekovic, second round pick from last year, has a lot of European experience. He played in Europe most of the, the all of last season, has developed his offensive game. He's athletic. Uh, both of them, really, yeah, young guys are athletic. Might not be ready. And then Trey Jimerson, who actually played, who's an undrafted guy who actually played in some starting games. Young guy, seven foot, that can run the floor defensively, strong. And we got a different mix of them, that's for certain, man. We got a different, different mix of bigs. But what we don't have is who's going to be the starter, and more than likely, and we talked about this book before. You guys put it in the chat. Tell me who you think your starter, who the Pelican starter is. I'm going to have to go with, uh, well, DC, let, let's do this, man, because when you look at uh, what we talked about earlier on, we would love to see the DeJounte Murray and Herb Jones backcourt. But as we draw closer to the season, it appears that that, that that might not be what you receive. You might be getting DeJounte Murray, McCollum, Zion, B.I., Tice. That might be what you're looking at right now. That's not for certain. And really, I would, I'm, y'all know I like to see Murray and Herb Jones. But it's going, I don't know, man. You, the Pelicans, I don't know, man. The Pelicans, this whole offseason, outside of the DeJounte Murray trade, uh, we've been basically in, in wait and see mode and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. Uh, y'all put y'all five in there. And, and I know you I know you got what kind of five you want, but I'm saying what five do you think the Pelicans would use? That's what I'm saying. Not you because you got good sense. But what five do you think the Pelicans will use? You give me the five. You think the pe- not what you would do. I'm talking about, I'm asking you guys, what do you believe? Which starting five do you believe that the Pelicans are going to roll out? At the start of the season, put it in the chat, man. Let me know how y'all feel about that, man. All right. So anyway, let me get ready to kind of open up the phone lines because we. Uh, let me hold on. DC, you there? I'm here. All right, bro. Give me your five, bro. You think the Pelicans are going to roll out at the start of the year, brother? Um, I'm I'm saying my starting five too. Oh, I got exotic. It don't matter. Five, you see, that don't matter. That don't matter. But the Pelicans are going to go. The Pels are going to go DeJounte Murray, right? CJ mm-hmm. McCullough, Brandon Ingram, Zion, and Daniel Tyson. Read them and we book it. That's what they're doing. Anything okay, outside of the ordinary, I think, um, as far as the center position, that can get changed. But everything else, that's etched in stone, buddy. <laughs> that they, is etched in stone. What the McCullough yeah, is etched in stone. If they do anything outside of that with uh with McCullough, I would be extremely shocked and happy. So I would be happily wrong, but I just don't see a world where CJ McCullough comes off the bench. I, I don't see it, especially when everybody wants it to be, which which I understand the thinking for him not coming off the bench if we're gonna start herb over him. Because we we all talk about being able to spread the floor. Being able to spread the floor. If you start Herb over CJ, and you got Bi out there, unless he's gonna turn into Bi from 2019, our ability to spread the floor is very thin. I mean, Dejounte can spread the floor too, but I mean, he's kind of in a similar mode uh, as Bi for shooting threes until last year. He had maybe one year of shooting threes at high volume, or it steadily progressed over his career. And, you know, it's got at its peak last year. So I would start, um, I would say Herb, obviously, would be in my starting line. Uh, John St. Murray, Trey, right? And I'm starting Trey, Zion, and B.I. Hold on, DC. Say it again, bro. I don't bro. give a shit about this. Yep. Going no break. center. You I'm broke playing. Up. I'm starting. I'm Say it starting. Again. John St. Murray. Mm-hmm. Can I say it? Or are you gonna keep telling me? Yeah, to yeah. Say it again. <laughs> say it again. I ain't I'm starting. I'm starting. Dejounte Murray. One more time. DC. I ain't. I ain't. Yeah. Yeah. Herb Jones. <laughs> you gonna say it again? Well, I hear you. Trey Murphy. Clip. Trey Murphy. Zion. 
and B.I. That's my starting lineup. I'm starting with no center. Now, probably I'm going to have an early substitution, depending on how that goes. And the first center I'm bringing off the bench, I mean, it's going to be Daniel Tice, obviously, because I think that makes the most sense. Unless it's uh, maybe matchup dependent. You know, if, I, if they got somebody like Edie out there, I might go Trey Jemison. He's the biggest guy. He's probably the strongest guy we have at center. I might go with him. If it's uh, more of a, like a Euro type guy, even against um, Jokic, I might go Carlo Makovic. You know what I'm saying? So I would run a matchup dependent lineup, man. But my core five would be our best players. And CJ could get it cooking. Man, CJ got free reign with that second year, bro. I ain't, I ain't never mad at you taking the shot. I don't care what you do, CJ. Make it happen. Make it happen with the second year. And that's how we rock. Man. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, it, it, and shout out to the fam. Appreciate y'all being in the stream, man. We're not going to have an extremely long show today. If you want to chop in, chop, uh, chime in and chop up game with us, the – Link is pinned to the chat. We'll be going up until I say about uh, just over an hour right now. And I got to cut off. I got another stream I got to do. But um, much love to you guys. Appreciate y'all being here. A lot of good commentary in the chat, man. Uh, Yakim says uh, Tice, B.I., Herb, Zion, DJ, but Carlo should be starting over Tice. Thank you, Yakim. Uh, Mary, what's up, Mary? Says whatever combination doesn't include. CJ knowing Willie, CJ is there. All right. Thank you. Pelicans Nola says Murray, CJ, Herb, B.I. and Zion. Brother Darwin says because Willie and Griff on the hot seat, I think they go Bur uh, Murray, B.I., Zion, Herb and Jimerson. All right. Appreciate that. Yakim also says Willie will choose Herb over CJ for defensive impact. All right. Thank you for that. Brother Vernon said smoking. Is Hunter Ice Cube is Trey Young? <laughs> you kind of late to the dance, there, Vernon. But I, he says, Smokey is is Hunter. Is Hunter? Okay, who is Hunter? Who, who's Hunter? DC. Ice Cube is Trey. That's, that, that's why we can't use. That's why we can't use. <laughs> He's talking about Smoke. DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre? Oh, De DeAndre Hunter. The guy Ice Cube. That went number four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Darius okay, and he says yeah. Ice Cube is Trey Young and Red is Jim, is GM. G, who, which one? Oh, oh, are you talking about uh, uh, Fields? Is that what you're saying, Vernon? Clarify, brother. All right, Young City says Murray, B.I., Herb, Zion, Jemison, C.J. off the bench. All right, thank you, Young City Night Board. Appreciate y'all for your commentary. And like I said, we'll be going roughly about an hour or so with the call-in segment. And we got one right now. Y'all want to chime in? The link is pinned to the chat. Also, feel free to answer the poll question that's up right now in the poll. How do you feel about the Pales five spot? What do you think? We got two options, great or bad. Which <laughs> And believe it or not, DC, guess what? This is 50% right now of the poll. So the poll split in half right now on feeling about the fifth position or the center position for the Pelicans. It's 50-50 right now. So we need some more pollers. We need some more voters in there to kind of push that poll either one way or the other. All right. So anyway, let's get into it. We got Lil V-Man chiming in. Lil V-Man, welcome to the show. How you doing, sir? What's that in BQ? What's that in DC, baby? Shout out to you, my brother. Thank What's you for up, being here. Yeah, it's all love, baby. Who that's? What's that and who that's in the chat? You know I mean? Salute, bro. What you think about the the Pels, bro? About the Pels five position, bro? What you, what you think? Man, I think Jemison was a good addition. Um, man, they got depth at the five right now. I don't know who they're going to send to the G League or whatnot, but uh, I mean, I don't really know, man. I mean, nobody a real legitimate starting five. I mean, it, it'll all have to depend on the lineup to pick it back on what DC was talking about earlier. Right. You know, it all depends on the lineup and who you're running with so you could know who who you could throw in 
to really give you a good matchup with who the op is. But um, yeah, man. I mean, it's it's something better than nothing. You know what I'm saying? We got size. We got agility. They just got younger at the five. You know, I mean, ain't really much out there. You know what I'm saying? You probably gonna have to work with what you got. You know, if you could run some highlights with who you got to see who you could throw in with who you could throw in, you know. I mean, look look what we got. We got probably two stretch fives and two bullet ball fives, you know. Um, we know Misi ain't no stretch five. We know Jemison probably ain't a stretch five. Our only stretch fives we got is uh Dice and Carlo, Carlito, you know. Um I mean, as far as the other four spots on the starting five, we straight. We got BI a uh, uh, point. We got BI one guard. We got we got nice two guards. We got three guards, and we got Z man. I, I feel like this with the fives we got. I mean, if you put them with Z, they should be straight. They should be straight. Jimmerson can average a double double. Me see probably could average a double double. You feel me? I don't want to kind of like give them too much praise because ain't nobody went to work yet. But when them boys start getting to work and working with Z Man, hey, they could flourish. They could flourish. Everybody got to stay out there. You hear me? That's right, B Man. Sure. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that, brother. I mean, it's definitely a, a big by committee approaching. You're right. If anything, it provides the, the, the Pelicans with a lot of flexibility because they got several different bigs there. So, I mean, it's just it's, not, it's just not, you know, you, you got Tice, who's not a full time starter, but you do have some versatility to look at the bright side there. So in terms of contention, how do you feel about the Pelicans contending, like being a team that takes the step? Do you believe like this other writer, uh, Harper, Zach Harper? was basically saying that he believes that the Pelicans are on the brink of contention, meaning they, you know, taking the next step in the Western Conference, perhaps getting into the Western Conference Finals. Do you believe that we're there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you got to look at the other teams we're facing. I mean, who made who made huge jumps during the offseason? The Mavs. Mm-hmm. You know, they got like five teams that we got to look out for. And you know, we're going to be in, in a cup. You know, we got to go through the cup and all that, the cup tournament. You know, we just got to stay healthy. Um, I mean, all we got to do is stay healthy, man. We got to we gotta stick together, man. I mean, teams going to be coming, bro. They're going to be coming. We can't, we can't take the WCF. I mean, we can't take the conference lightly, man. Y'all already know the Western Conference stack. They stack. Memphis got eat it. You know, we got to be ready. And only thing with us is we just need, like, a firm big. Like, you know, you know, if them boys flourish come training camp, we good. You did. We good. We just got to stick together and, and focus on one game at a time, you know, and just, like, stick together and, and stack wins. There you go. It, I mean, the results, the results, going, the results going to be the results, you know, just one game at a time. Yeah, bro. I uh, think even if we don't uh, stay healthy, if we wind up not trading Brandon Ingram, man, I think that still puts us in an excellent position. Because what's the odds of Brandon Ingram, DeJounte Murray, CJ McCullough, Trey Murphy, and Zion all getting hurt? All being hurt at the same time. You at the worst, you might have two of those guys hurt at the same time. And I think with two of them hurt, it's still a pretty damn good team. As long as it ain't both Bi and Zion and Dejounte Murray, like if one of those guys are healthy and everybody else is healthy, we're still very, very competent team. And pretty much able to beat the majority of teams. So I think by us being deep, if we don't trade B.I., it might be the first year where we're allowed to really overcome the injury bug. 
because somebody always gets hurt, seems like. But if we got this many guys, man, and somebody get hurt, it's like no sweat. You know, you just change them up, throw somebody else in, and we keep on going. So that's an advantage that I mean, we have I, right now. I agree. I agree. For the most part, we got a big foe. For the most part, we got a big foe. Any big can run with that foe, dog. For real. I mean, you got, you could get good ball movement. You hear me? You going to get good space. We just need somebody to crash, crash the balls, play defense, you know, protect the rim. You know, get us a good double-double, you hear me? And we going to be straight. We going to be straight. Nobody gonna really be messing with that. We got two seven footers, huh? We got two seven footers, some some bullet balls. You you know, and we gonna be good. But yeah, um, I see what your DC. V man, what part of the city you from? Uptown, bro. Yeah, man, Carrollton. Okay, all right. All right, all right. You, you can hear it. I'm talking up and down. I hear you, brother. I can hear you, brother. I can hear it, brother. Yeah. I can hear it, man. Yeah, I just had to chime in, man. I'm a who that for life, man. Well, V Man, sure. appreciate the commentary, man. Much love to you, brother. And thank you for chiming for in, bro. Sure. I'll, I'll be seeing you in the uh, comment section dropping game, too, bro. So we appreciate you sharing your time oh, yeah, with yeah, us. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Just Shout trying out. to participate. You know I mean? <laughs> Good insights, uh, too, man. For real, bro. V Man be dry. This is his first time chiming in. You need to chime in more, V Man, bro. You need to chime man, in. More. Man, I'm 35, man. I'm 35, man. You know what I'm saying? I be trying to give my little chime in here. No, no. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. And go pals. I right, sure. I'm a, sure. I, 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 do, I do the DC way. Go pals, man. You know, shout out to V Man. <laughs> Hey y'all, them shirts coming out too, by the way, man. We got the new, they coming out soon. The Go Pels Mind shirt, like I told y'all before. He got a, a the Pelican on as a brown pelican. He got his wings spread out like that. He got two bags, like two duffel bags at, you know, on, you know, around his feet, around his whatever the legs of the pelican. One of them got man, why are you playing, man? Make that put that pistol on him, shirt, man. We need that. I, that's what I was about to say. Why I you can't worry about the Go Pels, man? We want that put. I'm saying, I'm saying, look, DC's internet don't even work. He dropping out of you, man. But yeah, man, it's the, good, good. So he don't interrupt me. Let me hear up and tell y'all this before he pop back up here. Because he be trying to interrupt me every time I try to tell y'all about the new shirt that's coming out. It's the new Go Pals Mind shirt. It's MO Go Pals Mind. And it got the Pelican, his arms spread out like that. He got two duffel bags, one on each side of him. One duffel bag got money in it. The other one got some pineapples in it. And then they got a gun. Like he got a gun tucked there. You can't see, but you can see the top of the gun right there. So, yeah, I just want to throw that because DC always tries to interrupt me while I'm telling y'all about the Go Pales Mind shirt. So. No, don't, 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 don't try to get it off now. You want to put that pistol on them shirt, man. Right? <laughs> see? Go Pales Mind. <laughs> the kid with his legs twisted around. Man, what's going on? What? Man. I said that's about twisted legs. I didn't say nothing about it. I said he got two duffel bags. One duffel bag. Got yeah, money. the duffel bag with, with the Atlanta hoax on there. Put that pistol on. No, no, I'm oh, saying, uh, but the Go other, Pals. Duffel, but yes, yeah, Go Pals, man, his arms spread out like that. He got he got a gun on him. Is is you can't you can see the top of it. It's it's a Saturday night special. It's tucked in his 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 uh his belt. I like put, I like put that pistol on better than Go Pals, man. <laughs> <laughs> can't be friendly. Put that pistol on. We can't be friendly. How is that friendly? Do you so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta whisper it like how you do. How is that friendly though? How, how is it friendly when he he got his arms spread out there? He got a mad face, and then you know he got two duffel bags. So obviously this is not a this go, is a, go pals you know. mine. Go pals yeah. mine. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, now. Come on. What the, what the pelican gonna have dreadlocks? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, see, now you get it. Now you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're getting to DC. Now you're getting it. Now you're getting He getting into the spirit of it now. Subscribe now and stay up to date for all things New Orleans Pelicans.